Good morning, people. It's early morning here. Puffy eyes can prove it. Puffy eye. They call me Puffy eyes. Not Puffy eyes. So, steel. Rod, baby. Rod. Check out that rod. Hard as steel. All right. So to make the measurements fair, I'm going to use the seam. You see where they, where they press it? And then there's a seam here created on this side. And on this side, when they make that deformation to make these ribs, that those seams are created. That's what I'm going to measure across from. So measuring across from that seam, I'm going to slip it off and show it to you, ladies and gentlemen. That's a three. Huh. <laughs> ah. Okay. Oh, wait a minute. Let's turn it that way. Now, this has been going on. This experiment's been going on with me for about, this is around fourth year. And what I did was I painted it with some cheap paint, some dollar uh, uh, spray paint, just spray paint. And like one coat, basically. No paint here. And then a different dollar spray paint there, different color. Still a dollar you know, cheap paint, um, and I wanted to see how much it protected the metal. I think it does a great job, but before I put the paint on it, I, uh, let this, I let it go this far, and you'll see what I mean by that. That was a three, right? So now we see the, yeah, I know I got to shave. Listen, so now we see the end. There, there are the ribs here. There's the rib. I guess it's there. See the rib? We had a three. Let me reset this to zero. Good. Zero. Open. Go right at the end there. There we go. I'm rotating it like that so I can make sure where it comes out. Now it's shy. To get to three, I'd have to come all the way up four points. Four ten thousandths, four one thousandths of an inch, or actually uh, forty five hundred one thousandths of an inch. Four point four point uh, three. So what ha what do we observe here? We observe that when you cut rebar, this has been cut. The cut in wants to deteriorate more. Is what I found out. So it's, it's weird. It's weird. It's uh, it exposes a different part of the metal, uh, compresses it, or changes it. But you get a different deterioration. Look at that deformation there, and all that. That's a straight piece of rod there. So I can't claim that. And I bent it slightly. I bent it slightly so I could uh, see if the if the bending would create a fracture, and create some type of action. But no. And and there's your rust scale. Well, actually, it's rust scale, so it's uh, it's it's not creating enough pressure yet to do anything unless I do the uh, percentages of it. Let's see if I can get beside one of these ribs. Let me zero it out at the rib, so I can zero this out also, wherever I want to start. And so I'll zero this little little caliper out. So now it's at zero. It's at zero. Trust me on it. So I'll pull it off. Doesn't matter because zero is my starting point. And I'll try to find another location just on the ribs only. I'm around, uh, it's wider there by about six thousandths of an inch. Is that seven? Um, five, th six thousandths of an inch. All right, so that's just a little deformation. Let's try here. That's where the paint is. Now we're up to about 17 thousandths of an inch. Seven thousandths. At about you know, 17. I'm looking at it upside down. You guys might see it regular, but I see it upside down. I guess now you see it differently. Yeah, 17. So we come down here, and we see we we it's it's actually where we were cut, and 
I'm actually on now under by three thousandths of an inch. I can't find any reports, studies to show where you cut rebar, um, does it deteriorate? Or does it deteriorate and, and to what extent? So what I would do is I measure back until I get to my zero, my zero point again. And I'm not there yet. You have to bear bear with me. I'm not there yet. Zero. Hmm. Trying to find zero. Non-shave morning. This won't be a shave. This will be a day off for me, so I can uh, a couple days off, so I can uh, let my my uh, face not get a razor on it. All right, somewhere somewhere about here is where I'm back to close to close to zero point and this measures um, this one measures six inches so six inches or it's from right about there to where my thumb is so I meant five and a half right where my thumb is so we get five and a half, right? Yeah, that's not working, is it? Okay. Right about there, but I'm still not where this thumb is. So this thumb, okay, hold on. This isn't working out. This is not, I need to get back to here. Yeah. Yep, I wear my shirts inside out sometimes. Don't advertise. I don't have time for advertisement. That's the way back there around 10 and a half inches. 10 and three quarter inches. From the tip to there when I finally get back to my metal. 10 and three quarters. So from this end, it's uncut. I come down. Well, I'm in my bend at that point, so... I want to be fair. I want to get it before the bend, so we'll do it around seven inches. Right around seven inches. We'll take a measurement. Now this should be zero. Let me zero this zero this out. Oops. Let me see that where it is. Too late, I gotta recalibrate. So there's zero. There about zero. And then we come down here about 13 inches. It's off one uh ten thousandth of an inch right there. It's on this side. It's on this side. Let's see if I can do this right. It's on this side of the cut. This side is consistent. Without the cut, so I'm going to call that ten thousands of off. Let's see, right about there. See me rock it, then I'll show you the numbers, and then I'll come right about there also. Right between the rip. The rib slide it off, it's about five thousandths off, five thousandths of an inch. Let's go into the rusted area, the bend. The bend, you know, you're nothing for free, you can't just bend something without it shrinking and contracting in different formats. And that's about ten thousandths off. See, so you, your dimensions change when you bend rebar. Your dimensions change. It's the compressive side, it's the tension side of it, but it still has to perform. So when you make your links, etc., you still got to perform. Yep, <clears throat> pretty ductile. I mean, I felt a little bit of flex in it. Oh, you guys asked me to comment on the other engineer from not the guy, but it's a guy. I don't know, Washington, Utah, or something like that. I don't know where he's from. Um, yeah, he killed off the witnesses, too. So, I mean, how can you take data from somebody who kills off witnesses? 
he kills off witnesses and he keeps putting the location back to the face of the deck and then uh, by the building and then he steps it back to the uh, the tributary area that I talk about my butterfly area um, but he doesn't talk about the BMA that was there at one point this is not a one-off sample this is there are two samples, two samples, two of my tests going on, and they were at the same time. They were, they were, they happened at the same time. And these two were in love with each other at one point. They were connected. They were connected. So this steel is the same piece of steel, and I have two samples, then about the, approximately the same angle. Um. And about the approximately same angle, and I get to evaluate both ends of this steel. And so, what I'm coming up with is that you this one's coated, okay? So, that one's rusted, and the other one's coated and been centered. And these ends. These ends have seen, never seen another love like they never see before. Anyway, so anyway, they're they're much more eroded, as you can see, by themselves. And that's that metal, that metal. But interesting again, it's it's the metal that was sheared, that was cut, that now deforms itself. How much does it go back, shrinking, if you will, deteriorating, not swelling, this is just deteriorating. How much did it go back? And so without water, deterioration just through, just through air, how much of it goes went back? Now here's the question, and, and the guy got it wrong, he said the metal stretching. It's, it's got a very limited ductility to it. Very limited. It's not the way it works. Let's see if I can. Let's see if I can get you a profile of it. See my. See, see the flexing of it. I see it rebound. So it's got some. It does have. I'm messing up my desk, of course. It's got some. Uh, some ductility to it. Some elasticity to it. But it, it cycles. I can't just keep cycling this. It'll, it'll keep wanting to go over and over and over. If I cycle it, it's going to want to take the new form that I cycle towards. It won't spring back. It's not spring that. It will want to take the new form that I put it in, as you just saw. So it will, it will want to take the new form that I put it in. It's not springing back. It's not spring metal. And that, that was a compressive on this side and tension over there. Um, so I think I think he says he's a structural engineer. I think he's misunderstanding the concept of how pull out matters with uh, with con with rebar, and that this shrinking. The shrinking, the restriction, uh, the, uh, the, the uh, well, it's not shrinking. The removal of the materials, it's, it's changing. It's, 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 it's um, I like shrinking. As it shrinks back, meaning it was larger at one point and the metals deteriorate away, shrinkage, it becomes smaller. Just like a man's thing. Just a little bit of shrinkage. That's all we're talking about here, baby. We're just talking about shrinkage. Anyway. So, when it shrinks back, if it's being gripped, right, and it shrinks back, it gets limp, it gets softer, it just slides out. But up here where it's larger and fully engrossed, it now can bond and hold. So you pull on this. You pull on this handle right here. I, I'm sorry, guys. It's hard for me to tell. I'm looking at. Um, you see me as a full screen. I see a bunch of stuff on the screen, so it's kind of weird how I keep trying to position above something. 
I think you see full screen though. So if I grip this and I pull on this right hand, it pulls on the left hand. They're, they're married. They're together. I'm using it, uh, the stirrup area there. It pulls. Now inside it would be swelling, right? So it, it goes that way and this way. Now what's the one thing between that marriage is that what's causing the marriage to fail is not the concrete. It's pretty stable. It is this little lady here is doing it. Well, it's pretty stable. You get some water on it, you get some effervescence and salts. They actually can cause some fractures. They will cause some fractures in your concrete, whether you have steel in them or not. If you start getting the white efflorescence everywhere, they will expand. They will become, they're so hard, they will expand and they will gain track, gain like a root of a tree and they'll slowly lift up the sidewalk. Well, those efflorescence, so salts, they will expand and create cracks in your concrete. So here's the grip here. Now you can imagine if I don't change my diameter of my grip and I come down here, it's now it doesn't have grip. No grip, right? So no grip. And so now you don't have this rebar working. We look at our samples. We look at our samples. Let me show you a sample. We look at our samples and we've got fractured fractured materials. Now you can imagine it just slides in and out. There's no grip there. There's no grip, but it's still mount held on the end. So it can have some flex inside this hole, if you will, that plate, there's no grip. So to have this exaggeration of the hole, but it's, it's, it's very small. Well, in this case, it didn't look that small, but it's very small, but you've got no, you've got no traction there. You got no friction, baby. You got, and this is how this works through friction. No friction, and we just get, we're just having fun. We're not working yet. So, uh, so to get that friction, the deck gets loaded. When it gets loaded, it moves that little bit, and all it does is hit the metal. There's no, it, it, there's no movement of the steel yet until it starts hitting the metal, and then pushes down, causing reaction, trying to push it. But now the profile's changed of that steel inside the hole. It's got to be fully engulfed. Fully engulfed for it to work. Then they work together. If it gets loose, it just comes out. So you want the concrete to grab it, and now it works together. When it gets loose through the con through the con through the steel, jacking it off, making it loose that way, or through shrinkage, it will slowly lose its ability to hold. Now I'm just holding it just a little bit tight, just to give you an idea that it's still going to work, but not as good as if it was solid you know, that it will really work. But if it just loosens up a little bit, your reduction goes way down. And that's what's going on there. Now epoxies, they use epoxies and all. They did there's a few studies on that where the coatings they, they fracture, they create slippage because they they're a coating at that point and they can slip right they can slip right off the coating can. It can cause you some slippage right off the uh, right off the uh, metal there. Uh, between your concrete, concrete and your steel woman, man. So right on, right, oh gosh, right on the metal, if it helps it work, you guys remember it, you'll remember it. As you, now I can think of this, give me some concrete, I want some concrete. Now it's a new way to ask for um, relations, relations. Can I get some concrete? My steel is, uh, my steel needs some checking. So anyway, the, uh, down here it's going to slip more. And down here will not. I'm going to end that video with that because you can't beat that nastiness. Oh, gosh. All right. Bye.